Welcome to School of PE Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Miller, and I'm so glad that you could join me this week. We are going to discuss topics about FE, PE, and SC, and we're also going to answer questions that will help students prepare for their exams. Let's get started. Hello everyone, my name is Chris Miller. I'm the Associate Vice President of School of PE. And I'm excited to be here today to kick off our weekly School of PE podcast series. We're coming to you live each week with a new topic, a new subject. You know, we're gonna be talking about things from ranging from exam tips, test taking strategies, up on, all the way through to talking about current and future trends in the engineering world. Um, each week I'm gonna to try to have a different guest here, that way you're not just stuck listening to me. So we'll have people coming by that are you know, industry experts, or maybe a couple of our instructors might pop in from here and there to kind of chat to you about, you know, various exam topics, some test taking strategies and tips, but also share their knowledge with you about what's going on in the engineering world. Um, you know, engineering is always evolving. There's a lot of exciting things going on. So we'll talk about some of the current trends and some of the future trends, keep you updated on what's going on out there. Um, so that'll start next week. Today's just kind of kicking things off, a little bit laid back here today. Um, I will tackle the elephant in the corner, which is the transition for the PE civil exam from paper pencil to CBT. So why not we jump right into it? So I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but the PE civil exam is changing one year early to CBT. So originally the PE civil exam was slated to change from paper pencil to computer-based testing, otherwise known as CBT, in 2023. But NCES decided to fast track it and move it up to 2022. So this isn't something new. Um, you know, during the pandemic, uh, NCES was able to fast track or accelerate some of the transitions for some of the other exams. Um, for example, the PE electrical exam was slated to move to CBT starting in April, at least for the power portion of the exam or the power discipline for that uh, for the electrical. But they were able to move it and fast track it, and so you were actually able to start taking the exam in the new CBT format this past December 2020. So they moved it up a few months. So PE Civil's next. That's the big boy of them all. So a lot of exciting things. You know, a lot of unknowns. Um, you know, people have their, I guess their ifs ends about them, they're on the fence, but I'm gonna to try to uh, help clarify some of the main questions at least that we get from students and pers perspective students on you know, what to expect once an exam does move from paper and pencil to CBT. You know, the good news is if you think about it, you all have some experience with a CBT format. If you think about it, the FE exam, originally with a paper and pencil, and it moved CBT many years ago. So those of you that taken it in the last few years or several years, at least, at least have gone through the process and you kind of know how the feeling or what to take or what to expect during a CBT exam. You know, the biggest difference obviously is the fact that it is a closed book exam. You're no longer able to take in any references. You know, currently I've talked to students that have taken in suitcase full of um, references into the exam. But, you know, unfortunately, once an exam makes that transition, the references kind of go away. But it's not like you're all alone. You know, you still will have access to one reference, which will be the NCS reference handbook. So as they have made exams transition from paper pencil to the computer-based, they always release a handbook. And the handbook usually entails where you have equations, formulas, tables, other useful information that you'll have at your fingertips during the exam. Um, you cannot bring it into the exam. It'll be an electronic copy that you'll get. Basically, one side will be your exam. One side will be the uh, actual reference handbook. Uh, a nice thing is that the handbook is searchable. So, you know, let's say you're sitting in the class and you're, well, let's take FE Civil, for example. So let's say you're sitting in a thermodynamics class or maybe you're reviewing thermodynamics and you're like, ah, oh, all right, where do I find this? You can at least type it in and it'll take you to sections where thermodynamics is prevalent. Um, one of the great things about our review courses is that we kind of help train you or help you get better at navigating through the uh, reference handbook by referencing page numbers. So our notes will be like, all right, you can also find this on page 76 of the uh, NCS reference handbook. So the whole idea behind this is, is we want to help you get better at finding what you need quickly in the reference handbook. So it's very similar to what you do today. If you think about it, when you are studying and you're you know, creating references that you want to actually take into the exam, you're tabbing them, right? You're marking tabs that way you can get to them quickly because essentially the exam is a race against the clock, right? You want to complete the exam 
before the clock hits zero. So if you're spending a lot of time flipping through the pages, trying to find things, and I'm not just talking about the reference handbook, but your other references that you're currently able to take, you're wasting a lot of valuable time. And then what happens is as you're starting to kind of feel that time crunch, you start to get a little bit nervous and you also start to get a little bit maybe frantic. And so it kind of throws you off your, your game, right? You get a little bit, you know, like a pitcher, right? That's um, facing a battery, throws his best pitch and it just goes down in the dirt. He throws his second best pitch and down in the dirt again. So now he's starting to get a little bit frazzled. So what happens next? He might serve up a meatball. They hit out of the park for a grand slam. So we want to make sure that we keep a level head. And that way you're maintaining that, that level headness during the exam. So one of the ways to do it is to make sure that you're not, I guess, caught off guard. So you want to definitely become familiar with the reference handbook. That way, again, you're managing your time the best that you can. So another question that some students have asked um, about the um, you know, exams that are CBT is what do we do with the code standards and specs? Well, you know, right now it's still an unknown, right? No one truly knows what to expect about the new civil exam, or I don't want to call it a new civil exam, the new format that the civil exam will take within the um, 2022. So, you know, I don't have a lot of answers for you. Again, I can just kind of draw on past experiences with some of these other exams that have moved towards that new CBT format. Uh, one exam I can think of right off the top of my head is for the PE fire. So fire and protection is also a CBT exam. So it's closed book, right? So let's say, you know, well, for fire and protection, there's a lot of codes and standards that you need to know for the exam. So what happens is, even on their website, the NCS website, on the syllabus, they'll tell you that if a specific code is required to answer a specific question, you'll be given an electronic PDF of that code. That way you're able to use it for the question. So it's not like you have to memorize a zillion different codes and standards. So you'll have that available to you as well. Um, but again, you know, as you prepare for the exam, just once that handbook is out, you want to make sure that you know you go through it and you become very familiar with it. So, you know, I also tell students, you know, there's again, there's a lot of unknowns, right? About moving from paper pencil to CBT. You know, how do you approach it? What do you do for your current test taking strategies and tips? Do I alter everything? Do I throw everything out the window and start over? I tell students to approach it the same way, except for, you know, with the current exam, you can take in, like I said, a suitcase full of uh, reference materials. You want to kind of limit the number of resources that you're using because you're not going to have those resources available for you. So you want to become much more succinct in what you're studying when you prepare for the exam. But as we get more information about, you know, the syllabus change or the reference handbook availability, we'll definitely share those with, the, with our fellow, um, you know, people out there. Our, our audience will definitely keep you updated as time goes by. Um, again, if you guys would like to see any specific subject or topic, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. Send us an email at info at school of and we're happy to take a look at it and see how we can't turn it into a future podcast. We're excited to be reaching out to everybody, kind of engaging with the engineering community and, and talking about the upcoming, you know, like I said, trends and what's new in engineering. A lot of, like I said, a lot of exciting stuff. Engineering is such a broad arena. It's like an empty canvas. So many great things come out of the engineering world. We're just excited to be part of it. Um, again, we're very excited about these podcasts. Until the next time, have a great day and we'll see you soon.